Joe. Um, hello, Tamsin. Uh, thank you for um, coming on to this rebel chatting uh, uh, interview, if you like. Um, the, you've you're just going through. Thank you, because I know you're very busy. Because you've just moved, haven't you? Um, do you want to tell people who you are and what you do? Sure. I'm um, hello. I'm Dr. Tamsin Willy Barker. I'm a evolutionary biologist by training, um, and I studied baboon evolution in Ethiopia. Um, and that seems kind of random, but now I apply it. Uh, I, I discovered biomimicry, which is innovation inspired by nature. And so I've applied that knowledge um, of biological systems and organization to companies and teams. Cool. And um, tell them about the book. We have a book. Yes, that's my book. Uh, that is teaming. And um, I. so I... You know, I got back into the, I, I was a, um, I was an entrepreneur for 12 years and I got out of the workforce and, you know, had a family and then I was ready to get back in. And what I was struck by is I saw all those um, dysfunctions of a team, you know, and, and I could see that how similar they were to the baboons. <laughs> <laughs> the light went on. And so that's when I wrote that book of, you know, these companies and teams have all these great ideas and they're trying to accomplish them. And fast, efficient, effective manner, um, but they're structured wrong. They're not structured the way that living things structure for change, and they're not structured the way that humans like to work. Um, so I I thought I would, I would uh, kind of explain the way um, that living systems actually adapt to change and the way that human nature works in that way, and see if we could come up with ways of organizing in our companies that work with that. Mm. So, well, why do we not? It, fascinating, and I agree with everything you're saying, but, but why don't we do that? Why do we not? W w just go through, first of all, um, the way humans work now, what you think from your work, they should, the way they should work, and then yeah. perhaps why? Yeah, I mean, we're 98% we're chimpanzee. Um, but chimpanzees work on exclusive uh, resource dominance. You know, they work on dominance. So, and and we have that too. We call it ownership. Um, but we're not chimpanzees. You know, we work more like ants do. So we have uh, a shared future, a shared purpose, um, and we work in that way in different roles and uh, communication that's more stigmergic. Um, you know, bottom up and emergent. Yeah. And so, but our companies are structured in a way that um, every individual is competing against every other individual. You have grades or salaries or promotions, all this kind of thing. Um, but in, in you know, real life, humans need to work at communities. And so we would be looking at each other for skills and developing that mm -hmm. so that we collectively have more capability. And so just the structuring everything as a competition like that between individuals um, that have their own purpose, as well as some overlap with the company, you don't get those results, the fast evolution. Mm. So, well, when did this start happening? When did we start going? <laughs> well, well let me, yeah. so I, I think, you know, because I'm a biologist, I, I look at these ant colonies and the way they work. And what I see is when they fall apart, it's because of parasitism. So it would be um, a queen of another species will come into the colony. And the way they do that typically is creating propaganda pheromones, which make the host, yeah, the, which make the host go crazy going around in circles. And so the queen of this new species can just dive right in and eat the young or um, what they like to do better is sterilize the host queen and then the workers take care of her by mistake. So I feel that we've had some kind of parasitic imposition that's destroyed our social structures and the way that we grow wealth together uh, collectively. So I think we're ripe for a change. Well, I hope you're right. Um... Who do we need to change? Oh, you know, I think we're all people and we all have it inherently within us. It's just changing the structures and processes so that that could come out so that we can um, have more of that collective intelligence and more swarm creativity. Um, and then the other part is that 
you know, we're not anchored to place in any way. Like our companies are kind of out in the ether, um, global, but in real life and evolution, you know, you have a direct relationship with the place and the other species you depend on. And so I think we've, we're neglecting that, mm. but also it's where the shared purpose comes from. So I think companies have this huge opportunity to anchor everything around shared purpose in a way that's really meaningful and compelling and that works with our human nature. Um, I think it's an easy, easy switch. Yeah. Easy switch. Easy. <laughs> easy. So um, if it was so easy, why, ha why haven't they done it? <laughs> well, we have a lot of forces um, that would like to maintain our efficiency model. Um, you know, that's how you make profit. So mm -hmm. I think the trick is how do you align um, human nature and structures and processes that work for us with uh, profit? So mm -hmm. how can we, you know, um, you know, we'll naturally go to that point if we can design the systems to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, was there a time, well, presumably then, if we are um, supposed to work as ants do, then presumably if you go back in time, we will find a place, a time when we, we did do that. We, we worked. Well, when when was that then? How long ago? Well, it's different everywhere in the world. And you can actually see a genetic imprint um, because inbreeding, when you make that switch from, you know, foraging and uh, small groups like that to agriculture and settlement and then these big scale up situations you can see the imprint genetically uh, because the inbreeding goes up five times um, so you can see when each population made made the switch and then a lot of people still live the old way um, and and I think we're going to come back to that yeah there's a, a great book out isn't there uh... Um, a recent book I've come across called the um, the Dawn of Everything. I knew you were going to say that. Did you? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it's going to be that book. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Have you read the book? Then I presume. Oh yeah, yeah, and um, yes, and uh, I I I come out of that kind of tradition too because I was in an anthropology department and actually with Wengro, who's one of the authors. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so we kind of got cooked in the same cauldron although they come from an economic point of view. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that book shows that we can live all kinds of ways. We don't have one way we can, we live. Um, but also you see the, the rise and fall of civilizations like ant colonies do. I think we're in that time where things are kind of, you know, disintegrating into smaller um, colonies. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Being around that the, the kind of space where people are changing and, and there's a lot of sustainability going, you know, um, people advising sustainability and regenerative practices and that kind of thing. Um, there, there seems to be an awful lot of people telling other people what to do and, and not not as many people actually doing the thing. The thing. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, very true. Um, God, I mean, that's that's part of the thing is experts telling other people how to how to do. Um, plenty of that but really I think it's more about facilitating from the bottom up what's already uniquely possible there um, and less scale and less standardization and more uniqueness and possibility yeah oh, absolutely so there's, there's, there isn't one um, no one's got the complete answer have they? they've got to we've all got to kind of work our way through that haven't we yeah it's different everywhere but I think the point is that um, to to come from where you are uniquely it's mm. gonna and then the more exchange you know then it grows our capacity and mm. yet everyone is still uniquely free to be themselves yeah so you've now moved haven't you and you've developed a, a farm is it or well what is it it is called the borrego institute for living design and so the idea is you know usually we're creating national parks and state parks and people are supposed to stay out of that so the nature can evolve, but we're part of the nature. So, you know, how I think part of the thing is rehabilitating feral humans for reintroduction to the wild. I like to think that's my work uh, here. And so it's getting people to like really open their eyes and see fresh again, like see the way that life actually works and how adaptation occurs um, and just sort of 
reawaken that wonder and awe that we have as children so that we can, you know, unsee the world so we can make something better. Cool. So and you've got an, another book because you've got, I've read this one several times. <laughs> How super, uh, teaming, how super organisms work to build infinite wealth in a finite world. Great title, by the way. Um, but you've you've written another one, is that right? Well, I'm in the middle of writing one right now. So that one's teaming, which was, um, I was exploring the patterns, the deep patterns and uh, what that looks like in our lives. But then the teaming transformation is about to come out and that is applied. So it's any, you know, an executive, a leader, anybody can read that and go, okay, how do we actually put this into practice? Mm. Um, so it's designed to be, it's got prompts and questions and it's designed for a team or an individual to go through it. Uh, and I have a, a course that goes with that. Brilliant. So um, what's what's next then, apart from obviously packing and unpacking? The... Oh my gosh, I got so much stuff. Um well, so I'm working on the course to go with the book, uh, and I'm really excited about that. It's it's geared for executives and people that have never really thought of biologically. I mean, we don't you don't have to take a biology class in your MBA, um, as far as I know. So uh, I think we are, you know, and yet we're all alive and all wealth is biological. So I think we have a lot of opportunity to um, increase our our capacity. I was uh, the um, biomimicry you know this pax scientific so he's a uh an australian surfer and he looks saw these whirlpools and mm -hmm. wave you know and so he throws it and created a fan out of that and it turns out to be 85 percent more efficient right you right. would think we had already figured out fans but uh yeah and so i believe that that kind of thing is affecting us across the board that we have 85 percent more effectiveness um, that we can unleash with these kind of this change in thinking. Blimey. So, um, have you got any uh, plans to go and um, help politicians see the? Light? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can get them out here, that would be great. You know, yeah. um, the uh, experience of rattlesnakes and the in the mountain <laughs> line. Um, I but what I, yeah, yeah but actually, so I work with a lot of indigenous communities, um, like uh, Native Hawaiian and in Panama, the Kuna people, um, Lakota. Um, and then here in this canyon, this was, this is Kumeyaay land. And um, so they, their um, settlements are still in the canyon and pottery and all that sort of thing. So I, what I want to do is bring executives here and they can see that, you know, we're still alive. We're still here. And we're still part of everything, so um, they can, you know, open their mind to another way of, of doing things. Um, so that working with these communities to develop economic new economic models that yeah. unlock this capacity, um, and then um, doing like immersion retreats for executives and um, anybody that's trying to manage or organize the creative teams. Gosh, and so the. Um... If you're so, if you're challenging the economic model, um, what I mean, I've always thought you know, Gödel's incompleteness theory. You can't create a model and it be complete. It, it's forever adapting. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, we, um, and, but we seem to have been stuck at, at this particular, very focused, competitive, compete and control economic uh, cap. And they call it capitalism, yeah. don't they? But um, how are you going to how are you going to how can anyone persuade the dominant winners of this paradigm that it's time to change well you just have to make it juicier on the other side right okay um, yeah. <laughs> but i i mean i you, i can show that there's 85 percent more efficiency and effectiveness and possibility you're going to get more creativity more more possibilities so you're going to have more resilience you're going to have i mean i can show that um so any executives like yeah that looks good mm. um but then, you know, then you get into uh, really concrete things like they, they can use. But then I think ultimately we're looking at reinventing capitalism in some way. Um, and it may be, you know, if you look at biologically, maybe it's community ownership. Um, any way that we can anchor profit to place and uniqueness. Um, you know, and maybe AI will, will allow us to do that maybe it will help I don't yeah. 
Uh, but I think that other thing that comes with that is um, the breakdown of trust is that you don't really know who anyone is. Um, and so I think that's going to facilitate these smaller uh, groups of trust. So wow. I think it would be to our benefit. Yeah, I think um, I mentioned Dr. Kathy Allen before um, we came on the, on the program, as it were. Um, Dr. Kathy Allen, I think, says that um, change goes at the speed of trust. So that is very true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good one. Well, that's fascinating. And um, good luck with the book and the new place. And um, yeah, if you want to read more about this sort of thing, there's uh, Hamzin's book. And um, yeah, thanks very much for uh, coming online and chatting to me. Well, thanks for having me on. Mark.